Why? Hello and welcome everybody. It is Pox again. So today I wanted to go ahead and update you guys with the Death's Oath character progress and a little twist I've actually done on Death's Oath this go around to make it feel a bit better. Um, so previously in the video I told you guys that I think that CI is kind of like the better alternative to go when you have a bunch of chaos. Um, although I don't know if that's necessarily the best option now. It's difficult to say. So I ended up running Mastermind a few times uh, on our private league and I ended up finding the Devouring Diadem. Now, the Devouring Diadem is really cool because it triggers Feast of Flesh every five seconds, which basically, whenever it procs, you heal to full life, full ES, and for our build it would be full mana, but we don't use mana. So with this helmet, it gave me the ability to actually go Eldritch Battery, Mind Over Matter. The reason why I never did that before is because when you have Death's Oath on, because Death's Oath deals damage to you, it does not allow your energy shield to recover at all. With Devouring Diadem, every five seconds, our energy shield tops up to full immediately, every single time. We also have a chance for it to start on recharge when we use the skill. I don't actually really see that happen very often. This also is nice because it puts our buffer of having 50 mana to cast up to 2000 energy shield. And I haven't really done much to respect that. Literally, I pretty much just, instead of pathing out this way, I decided to path through this way. Now, before I show you guys something kind of cool that I'm going to be doing, uh, I want to also let you know that I plan on respecing uh, this part to path through here and dropping the area nodes here potentially to grab spiritual aid because uh, I'm trying to get my effective life pool a bit higher. We're about 6.5k right now. I do have life nodes to pick up, but I think I know a way to get more damage as well, which is essentially using... Um, the porcupine recipe or divination card set you can farm an item level 50 short bow now on the short bow you can actually delve craft sorry it's a bit bit screen white here if you use a theric bound and pristine you can actually have an item level 50 bow that is 20 percent more spell damage to socketed skills so with cane of unraveling that's kind of like a plus one gem right then you can roll with bound uh, if you look here, you can roll for 50, 110% increased damage. Cane of Unraveling is only 20. On top of that, you can also roll on Suffix, 50 to 60% increased damage on full life, which puts us to like, let's say 140 to 180. I don't know if the underground, I don't know how that one really works. Um, and then on top of that, you can actually go over here and now that we are maxed with our crafting for this if i were to type in chaos i can roll 40 percent non-ailment chaos damage overtime multiplier onto my short bow so it'd be 20 percent more damage with socketed skills about 180 percent increased with 40 percent more ailment damage over time so i would lose 11 percent more which you can see here but gain about 160 to 140 percent increase and then lose one level on my Blight. The advantage to doing that is I would gain access to a Quiver with life and resistance as well on top of that. Potentially even if you were to say, for example, have a Chaos uh, Impresence and or the new Shaper one, one of them gives you Temp Chains for free, the other one gives you Despair for free, that reservation of removing one of these is going to allow us to run any aspect you want, ideally Aspect of the Spider. So that's kind of like a more end game swap I've been thinking of doing. I just kind of have to uh, chrome this bow, but it hasn't really been complying just yet with the crumbs. Anyway, though, with that being said, let me go ahead and show you guys some mapping content. My gear is pretty shit because I swapped to like a little bit of ES. So as you can see, I'm still using like some armor pieces. But let's go ahead and show you a tier 14 map here. Uh, it's going to be a sunken city map. So let's go ahead and pop it in. Now I will say, the only thing that really gives me trouble with this build when mapping is fucking porcupines. Uh, porcupines are really annoying to deal with, even with basalt, physical mitigation, uh, and having like devouring diadem. It's really the only thing that hurts my character when we're mapping. Of course for the map boss if you, you know, like are not paying attention. Oh yeah, and because the Devouring Diadem, it gives plus one to all curses, which is really nice. 
but it also gives um, socketed gems have mana reservation reduction, uh, which allows us to run discipline. So I actually ended up dropping efficacy off smoke mine and uh, dropping fate. Well, actually, no, I saw phaser. I'm just kidding. I just dropped efficacy off of them, and I decided to run discipline right over here where the boots are. Now, I am still pretty scared to do Syndicate on this character. I just feel like having a character whose sole defenses are only curses, um, it makes it so Syndicate is just extremely dangerous. I will go ahead and run these guys for you. The Syndicate's here to show you. Really hope I don't die. Kind of don't want to die. <laughs> but I'll do it just for you guys. Oh yeah, and then with that bow craft as well, uh, I should be able to remove the one spreading rot that I have here for a uh, life jewel. With damage, of course. Oh, of course it's, it's the door one, which is the worst for us, fortification, because uh, curses don't work on the stupid door. Oh, and there's one other thing. By doing the Eldritch Battery swap, you actually do not gain the ability to run Arcane Surge anymore. Alright. Let's jump right on... Oh, there we go. Okay, I'm gonna wait for the Vol Blight first. See if I can... Okay, let's Vol Blight right now. Vol Blight. There we go. Ow. Aceling moves to fortification. Uh, I'd prefer in transportation, but I guess it doesn't necessarily matter in this. Here's going to be our boss fight. Ooh, that was a mean smack. That was the Feast of Flesh proc right there that you saw. Uh, I also did set up, um, I have a Desecrate on cast one damage taken, level 1. The purpose of that is basically I get hit by a boss or, you know, mobs in general, specifically on a boss fight. Um, and then when I get hit, it creates the Desecrate, which creates it here. And then it allows the Diadem to eat those corpses uh, to heal us back to full. So it's not the most reliable thing to do because it's every 5 seconds. But since we would had pretty much no sustain on a Life Deaths Oath character, it was a great, great addition to the character. So I was really happy for that. Anyway, that's pretty much about it for the Deaths Oath progress. I don't really have much else to show you guys or tell you guys. I do have another character that I'm working on, though. So I want to, you know, just sneak peek, show you guys a little bit of that. Um, we ended up getting a tiny trial and crafted this Chimeric Chant Eclipse Staff, which is a double prefix, which has power charge on crit, which now gives 4% more damage per power charge, 72% spell damage, which is the hybrid, with plus 2 to level of cold gems. So what I'm actually going to do with this staff is first I'm going to 6 link it by, you know, first I got to quality it, then I got to get Hillock and Transportation to get 28 quality, then I need to craft quality on here to get it like 42, then we'll 6 socket 6 link. And then I am going to multi-mod because we actually finished running Pale Council. So we've got multi-mod for 2x. And from the multi-mod, we're going to do crit multi when there's a rare unique nearby enemy. We finally got this maxed. We are also going to put a cast speed on it. Uh, cast speed is one exalt for the highest craft. So that's locked suffixes. And then for prefixes, we're going to be putting on um, gain 
14, which this goes up to 20%, but it's going to be gain up to 20% of non-chaos damage as extra chaos damage. So that's going to be our beast of a staff. Um, and then the build we're going to be playing it on is none other than, wait for it, wait for it he's still low level he's 69 with some pretty budget gear right now but it's discharge totems let me get my charges so this is a little baby still you know it doesn't have too much gear it's really slow and clunky because we just started leveling it but it's gonna be a beast of a character remember that discharge is a seven percent crit based skill so the only crit nodes we have is like these two plus this and boom and we're currently sitting at a crit chance on discharge of 47 percent uh in a five link discharge was changed recently i don't know where or when it was changed but it was changed recently and now discharge uses um the character charges so you can have 100% uptime on your discharge totems. Um, yeah, but anyway, that's just the sneak preview of this character. Uh, it should be a monster once we get that staff going for a single target. Pretty excited. Map clear should also be okay. But that character is a secret. You don't know about him yet, okay? We're, we're not we're not ready to build that character. So anyway, hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. Remember, if you did, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And remember, you can catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash pox. Hope you guys had a wonderful time, and I'll see you boys all tomorrow. Take care, everyone.